Okay, that was kind of a pain. And I'm betting um, I found the cause of that little ticking, rattling sound when the lathe is in uh, neutral, or, you know, the spindle's not on. I'm thinking it's just these bearings, because they're, they're in the air when the spindle's off, and then as soon as the spindle is on, these guys pull out and ride up on that cone that we took off a minute ago. So, I don't know if there's a, a really smart way to fix those or not, but it can be done. We'll just see if we have the will. There's the, I guess that's basically the brake disc, sorta. Ooh. Um, there's half of a spring. There's the other half. I think if I remember correctly, the practical machinist thread I was looking at, there's actually a backup set screw underneath this, or maybe this one is considered the backup. So it's basically jamming against the one underneath. Yeah, yeah. And that was done as you would expect with a, a through set screw. It's not just a normal one jammed on top of a, another normal one. So that one indexes into a hole in the shaft, as I understand. I guess I need to take the belts off. That would have been smart to do a minute ago. Okay, took care of the belts. I apologize for the wind noise, but it's about 85 degrees today, so it's kind of uncomfortable, but not hot. I thought this was a multi-piece friction material, but that's one big hunk. Interesting. There we go. Okay. That's a pretty casting. Okay, so this is kind of making sense to me because of a uh, great guy on the Practical Machinist uh, Monarch Forum. His name was um, Beckley23, I believe is his handle. Uh, his, real, his actual name was Harry. And uh, unfortunately, he passed away a few years ago, but he left a legacy of machine rebuilding and especially Monarch information for those of us who are still here. And something that he noticed was you couldn't seat this bearing and the assembly behind it if the snap ring groove had a snap ring in it. And so he was uh, in contact with Monarch asking them questions about, hey, what is this supposed to be like? Because there's no snap ring here, but if I put one there, then you can't put this thing together. And uh, Joe at, at Monarch said, hey, it's very possible that it left the factory without, and that was just a secondary purpose for a slightly different model or something like that, who knows. So anyway, I'm seeing a, a missing snap ring, but it's not actually missing. So we need to take off these two snap rings though, and I think that'll get this off, and then we'll be able to pull maybe this back bearing off. Hmm. 
That side is really gummed up. There we go. That's a man's snapping right there. Well, I guess maybe these will work. Ooh. Oh yeah, I, think I can make this work. Maybe. Had a little bit of action since uh, you guys were with us last. So the snap ring that's inside that groove was really, really stubborn. Um, my lovely assistant came out and helped me out with that. That took a little while and then Trying to grab on this uh, inner, these gear teeth was just not working. There's another thread, somebody having this same challenge and they had good luck with just grabbing onto the uh, belt grooves, which doesn't make me thrilled, but hopefully I won't get penalized for it. And my puller was too short, so I had to machine some extra, uh, some longer legs or whatever that part's called. I also protected the end of the shaft so this little sleeve is pushing against this shaft instead of the inner shaft that the uh, clutch mechanism rides on. So this is the heavier duty, uh, more rigidly mounted um, shaft to push against. So I haven't done anything except set it up and turn on the camera. So we shall see how this goes together. Oh yeah, we are moving. I was looking in the wrong spot, so you may be able to see this ring here, this bearing race, is uh, sliding right out. Not this whole deal, apparently. I'll just grab something for that. If it falls, I don't want it to just bang on that. Okay, we have success. Oh man, that thing is heavy. Like, surprisingly heavy. Wow. So there's our little sleeve. Worked perfectly. Kept from smashing up the threads on that. Oh man, that is nasty. And it stinks too. Be another good opportunity for smell o vision from always sunny in the shop. So that doesn't, that looks symmetrical. It's kind of beveled on both sides and goes on the front there. Basically, it looks like I kind of have two bearings and then a spacer in between them. And these are 73L18. New departure. They've been out of business a little while. Or gobbled up by someone else. I can't remember with new departure. And that is the nasty side. So you have new grease that I was trying to pump in there. And obviously that's where a lot of it went. 
And then over the years, this is obviously not all fresh, got people trying to put lubricant in there and not do what I'm messing with now. And it just kind of got thrown all over the place. Ugh. Yum. So one of my decisions is gonna have to be whether I go ahead and replace bearings since I'm already into it or not. That is just never ending. <clears throat> Clunk. I think our last step here in terms of disassembly is going to be the housing for the bearing. So it's what I understand, the outer part is all one piece. Good Lord. Yeah, some of it doesn't look too bad under there. Obviously the red stuff is mine and the uh, crusty stuff's been there the longest, but some of this doesn't look too terrible underneath. Barely taking any force. Just need to stay on the snap ring. There we go. Ta da! Okay, we are disassembled now. Got to be extremely careful because. This back here is just the bearing that supports the shaft. So on the other side of that bearing is uh, our headstock oil and everything else. So be very, very careful to protect that. Okay, that should do for tonight. Um, boy, gonna be fun cleaning up all this grease. So now that we've gotten everything taken apart, just to give kind of an overview, there's our back plate where we fill and clean out the grease. And starting from the end of the mechanism, there's the spider. There's one of the clutch discs with its springs. I need four springs, Monarch tells me. Here's the friction material, basically the clutch itself. Here's the rear disc. And there's the spacer ring and one of the snap rings. Here is the pulley sheave itself. And then the bearing housing. 
So those two little pipes are what goes to the back of the lathe where you actually insert the, the grease and the re relief valve. And then there's our other bearing. And that little shim goes between the bearing housing and the headstock. And as you can see, Monarch was not messing around. They uh, ground the back of that to make a perfect fit. Just another one of those things that you can see just how much quality was in Monarch's processes. So I don't know if you saw it during the video. Um, I may not have c captured it, but this groove here, this channel is where the grease needs to come out and it was completely, it wasn't rock hard, but it was completely packed. There was no room for grease to move around in there. So anyway, here's what we've got. This is a big pile of parts that need to be degreased and cleaned up. Uh, I don't think I need to go crazy on there, but I do want them clean. And then of course, lots of cleaning in here. I think what I'm gonna do is try and get it clean enough that I can paint it and just brush on some of the uh, exterior um, NV green paint. I think I like that name for it. Um, just so that when I do have to get back in here sometime to clean it or to inspect something, the uh, green will make it a lot easier to get grease off of rather than this kind of textured um, primer paint. I don't know exactly what the yellow is, but you can barely see any of it because of just how nasty and how long grease has been caked on that cast iron and cast aluminum. Oh boy, lots of work coming up. 